It's commonly brought up about Terraria's melee class that most of the weapons are closer to something like a ranger or mage weapon, having projectiles that allow you to keep your distance from enemies. So in this video, I try to beat Terraria with true melee only. This might be one of the hardest Terraria challenges out there. I mean, look at this. How am I supposed to fight a 3,000 pound, 15 foot wide floating eyeball with this? That's like a toddler hopping into the ring with that. This is gonna be immensely difficult. So I decided to do it in master mode. Woo! <sighs> well, here we are again. So, just like every other Terraria playthrough, I started by establishing America as a country in 1776 by gathering the boys to- Ah, I'm just f***ing with you, I chop trees. So after collecting a sufficient amount of wood, I traveled to the right of the world where I ran into a desert and tried using this trick to find a desert pyramid underneath the sand. And I thought I did, so I boxed myself in to escape from this vulture. Bro, get away from me. Anyway, it wasn't a pyramid, just a small room, and now I'm trapped with only two hearts, a vulture waiting to skin me, and worst of all, Wild Lamau still hasn't let me out of his basement. Help me, please! Anyway, I died. Dude. So I headed back to the desert and collected some cactus and made cactus armor as well as my first weapon, a cactus sword. Basically, if you're not already aware, true melee is just a melee weapon that you actually have to hit an enemy with the weapon for it to do damage. So getting hit by bosses is almost inevitable. I traveled down into a cave to collect some loot and immediately found a house. All right, let's see what crappy loot- Woo! Hermes boots! Hell yeah! Yeah. Okay, well, I wasn't expecting to get that lucky with my first house, but uh, I'll take it. I kept mining down until I found a beetle. Dude, why am I being bullied, dude? What did I, what did I do to you? Upon respawning, I went back to the left and dived into another cave for some more scrumptious loot. It ended up leading to the jungle where I immediately found a shrine with an aglet in it. Then, a yellow slime graciously sent me home because he knew I wasn't safe in the cave. How thoughtful. Once I respawned at home, it was nighttime, so I boxed myself in and watched as my guide struggled to survive. Yeah, get him. Get him, zombies. Dude, just, guys, just kill him already. Come on, kill him. Kill him. Kill him. It was fun. When day came, I slammed down a few blocks of wood, and, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is my house. This'll look good eventually. I think. Anyway, I continued exploring, and so I decided to continue exploring. So I continued explo- I'm not exploring anymore. I instead went down into a cave and found another set of Hermes boots, enough emeralds for an emerald hook, and a few life crystals. I found a mace I can't use in a chest, then like 20 feet to the left, I found, guess what, another mace I can't use. And you know what would be really useful right about now? Another damn mace, that would be fantastic. Then I went home voluntarily and 100% on my own volition. I personally think that was a very successful mining trip. Nice job team. When I got home, it was nighttime, so I was too scared to go outside, but instead I stayed in my house where it was safe and crafted a gold sword. It was damaged, which really sucks, but I had enough gold to make another one. So I- What? That one was also damaged. I swear sometimes I just want to quit this game. To test out my new damaged sword, I decided to do what I really didn't want to and went outside. Now, I know this looks bad for me, but you should see the other guys. I continued trying to explore the surface of my world. Why do I keep trying to explore? It, it never works out. I finally make it all the way to the ocean and find a trident in a chest, so I start using that instead of my gold sword. I die several more times because it's master mode, but I'm just gonna leave most of that out because, I mean, mostly because it's embarrassing. I go caving for some more ores and have perhaps the most embarrassing death I've ever had. Oh, oh my... <laughs> But upon returning home, I continued flushing out my base, and it ended up looking like this. See, I told you I'd make something out of it. Look at this, this is, this is beautiful. I used my ores to make some silver armor, then ventured down into the corruption for another weapon. Okay, pause. See, if we had gotten a crimson world, we would have been able to get two amazing weapons, the rotted fork and the blood butcher. Instead, we got corruption, because I'm unlucky as- Well, neither of the corruption alternatives are true melee. Or are they? Well, I've decided to rule out the light's bane, but the ball of hurt is a flail, and flails have forever been debated as to whether they are or aren't true melee, because they technically do fit the definition we gave to true melee earlier. It is technically a melee weapon that you hit with the actual weapon instead of a projectile, so in that sense it is true melee, but it also has a greater range than most other true melee weapons. But I do want to point out its range is about equivalent or even less than other true melee options. However, no one can deny that the swing attack definitely is, so I've decided I'm allowed to use this weapon, but I'm only going to try to use the swing attack as much as possible. Alright, enough blabber 
flapping, I just had to get that out of the way, and I'm sure we'll get back to dying shortly. I smashed the first orb, getting the musket. All right, we knew the musket was coming up first. And died immediately after. There it is. I went back and exploded another one, getting the ball on my second try. Ball it hurt, more like hurt my balls. I'm not leaving that in. But then I returned home and quickly smacked down a few platforms to fight the Eye of Cthulhu. All right, come at me, big boy. Got nothing on me. And it was actually going pretty well until I fell through the platform for some reason and almost died. But after a quick heal from the nurse, my sweet voluptuous nurse. Mm. Uh, quick, give me your juices. Thank you. I was back to it. But after falling off the platform again, I mysteriously despawned. No, 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 please, please. <laughs> And it was clear I was not prepared for this fight. To prepare a little bit more, I quickly made a elevator and jumped down it, getting more life, my third and definitely not last pair of Hermes boots, a band of regeneration, my guess what, fourth pair of Hermes boots. Bro, I don't need any more boots, goddamn. And some other unnoteworthy stuff. And while trying to prepare, I made a terrible mistake. I know I said I wouldn't include so many deaths, and trust me, I have had to cut out a lot because this is master mode after all, but some of these are just so funny. <laughs> Who threw that bomb? Anyway, after that mining trip, when running on my platform, I see a sky island, and while trying to build up to it, I die not once, not twice, not even three times, but... Oh wait, yeah, no, it, it, it was three times. Anyway, after dealing with the harpies, I got up to the sky island, and it was a star fury, and I can't use that, so uh, that was... Pretty useless endeavor. <laughs> Continuing my endeavor to better prepare for the Eye of Cthulhu, I went into the snow biome and I find, say it with me, my fifth pair of Hermes boots. Well, technically furry boots, but same thing. Ooh, there's an evil presence. Okay, I think we should be geared up enough to do this. I don't know. Come at me, big boy. Oh. Stay back. There's no way I'm losing to you again. Good damage right there. Oh. Oh, he's turning. He's popping. Come at me. Oh, there he goes. Oh, yeah, that's nice damage. Oh. Oh, bro, chill. Calm down, buddy. You're low. I know you're low. He's zooming. He's zooming. He's zooming. Who let this man zoom? I'm gonna get you, buddy. There it is. Yes. And there we go. We finally have our first boss defeated. After the fight, I go to the desert to try and get some more life and get another pair of boots. How many goddamn boots do I need? I finish maxing out my health and then a goblin army starts invading. So, I die a lot. Man, stop. What? Stop. So much, in fact, that it becomes a graveyard biome. Bro, it's a graveyard. I just want to spit on these go damn goblins all down his head. Give him a couple spanks, you know what I'm saying? They're spanking me so hard right now. These goblins literally bending me over. Just, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Don't put that in the video. But eventually, I do finish the event and take out the goblins. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, build a little crafting area here. So uh, let's do that. Crafting area complete. All right, uh, I think it's time to uh, fight the Eater of Worlds. So after that was done, I decided to move on to the worm, but after getting stuck in the caves and not really being able to get out, I got on really low health and the worm killed me. Eat my testicles, you freaking freak. Go die. So I go to the jungle and try and get some more loot. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh! Look how many there are! There's like eight trappers! What am I supposed to do? Legitimately, what am I supposed to do? Angry trapper, more like trap these nuts. Oh my god, I hate myself. After I respawned at home, I used a gravitation potion and found a balloon and a horseshoe. And then I used a teleportation potion and found the glow tulip. I just like teleported right next to it. If you didn't know, this thing is super rare. There's only two in small worlds and this was a small world. So that's pretty insane. Look at this, I've got a little buddy. My name is John. So me and John went underground to find the goblin tinker and made the lightning boots. And then I decided to fight King Slime. It was a pretty basic fight and I got the slime mount. Then I went back to the corruption to take on the eater of worlds again. So I spawned him in and started the the fight. 
Bro, stop hawking your loogies at me. Jesus. This fight is actually pretty hard, especially with a weapon with not such great range, because the eater literally just constantly hurls little balls at you that do an unreasonable amount of damage. I'm on one heart! Help! Help me! Help! So every once in a while, I just had to run and hide from him for a while because I got super low a bunch of times, but eventually I was able to take him out. Nice, swarm scarf. Let me use that. So then a meteorite lands. Ooh, look at that. And I try to mine it up, but well, what did I do to you, bruh? Why am I getting bullied? Jesus Christ. But after that, I decided to get another weapon so I can get rid of this flail. And the weapon I would be going for was the phase blade. Uh, honestly, I don't think anyone ever uses this weapon, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it out. I had enough gems to craft it already, but all the colors do the same damage, and I wanted a red one, just uh, because I like red. So after finding the rubies I needed, I crafted up. So then I decided to fight the Eater of Worlds again, one so that I could prove I could do it with an actually undeniable true melee weapon, and also because I got like no shadow scales from the last one, so I have to do it again. I crafted up the summon, a few potions, and I placed down some heart lanterns, and then I summoned him up again, and this time it was even worse. I mean, I was constantly on low health, and I had to get right up inside of him to actually do any damage, and from that close up, I couldn't really dodge attacks, and I'm gonna make it short, but this fight literally took forever. I mean, it just took so damn long. I don't even- it was like the most painful fight I've ever had. But eventually, I was able to defeat him and craft up the Deathbringer pickaxe. I went to collect up some obsidian and hellstone and I'm- I messed- I mined up so much hellstone. I messed that hellstone up. Bruh, get up. What was wrong with you? No! No! Rest in peace, my friend. I went to the jungle and died to a chest. Dude, what? I thought I got all the explosives. And when I get home, I craft up an entire set of molten gear. I got the armor, the pickaxe, the axe, and most importantly, the volcano. It was only a normal one, but since I had so much hellstone, I thought I'd craft up a few more just to get a better reforge. And the first two of them are normal, and the other is bulky, which is okay, but I still had a lot more hellstone. So after getting some more obsidian, I craft some more and get nothing. Normal, normal, normal. Man, what the hell? I do set up a bunch more houses and set up the pylons for the desert, jungle, snow biome, and caverns. And then it was time to take on Skeletron. All right, come at me, big boy. Come get some. So when I was fighting Skeletron, I started by just trying to take out his hands, and I was actually able to do so because the volcano is actually pretty powerful but i was constantly on low health which you'll see becomes a theme throughout this playthrough on account of uh having to be inside the boss's assholes to get any damage <coughs> um so yeah i uh i died i then went into the desert to loot it up i didn't really get anything of note just because there's nothing really useful for me here so i don't even really remember why i was doing this in the first place but uh yeah whatever but i did find the golfer which surprisingly for once in his goddamn life would actually be useful a little bit later why are you bullying me anyway i headed back to the dungeon to try again and this time it actually went pretty well i decided i needed a double jump now usually that's pretty easy it's something you usually get pretty early on but not for me oh no i don't get the luxury of being that lucky. I make the frost spark boots, loot up the jungle, don't really get anything useful, you know, another pair of Hermes boots, that's always nice, and after, like, hours of searching, I finally get the cloud in a bottle. Bro, finally! So, I turn it into a cloud in a balloon, then a horseshoe balloon, and decide to use another teleportation potion. Let me slurp dish up real quick. Uh, bro, <laughs> what?! <laughs> I spawned in the shimmer. I really don't even know how that happened. My teleportation potion luck is just on point, I guess. I dig back up and throw in a bunch of crap. I don't really get anything out of it, but yeah, it was fun, I guess. I also built some houses down there for a pylon so I can get back easier. I went back to the dungeon, upgraded my arena with another layer of platforms, and uh, put some campfires down to try again. All right, round two, bonehead. Yeah, you like that? Ooh, yeah, taste it, taste Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. One hand down already. Oh! <laughs> the star hit him. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there's the second hand. Now it's just me and your big head. Come here, buddy. Yeah, you like that, don't you? Just gotta heal off. Okay, you see that? That's that's what sucks about true melee. Ooh, this is good damage. More damage. Mm. 
Oh, my neck. Did you hear that? He's so close to being dead. Just a few more hits. There it is. Get boned, dumbass. Now that Skeletron was dead, I was able to go inside of his dungeon to get some stuff. I get the Cobalt Shield before turning that into an Obsidian Shield, and I finally set up the Shimmer Pylon, and I throw in a Life Root and an Apple for the Vital Crystal and Ambrosia. Some nice permanent buffs right there. I headed down to Hell and set up a platform for the wall. Dude. Come on, let me have some peace, goddamn. What did I do to you? Jeez. Anyway, I transmute my magma stone for a lava charm, so maybe I can get the tear spark boots later. And then I go into the jungle, collect up some materials, and craft the blade of grass. Go into the dungeon and get the Miramasa, and I craft up the light spain, combining them all at a demon altar for the knight's edge. Beautiful. I reforged it at the goblin tinker, took out my frustration on a couple of eyes, and I grabbed a couple of potions. I went down to hell, went to the end of my bridge, and threw the doll in the lava. Okay. I don't know how I'm supposed to dodge these lasers. This is pretty effective at getting rid of the hungries though. Just like all the other bosses, I had to be right up against the wall to get any damage, and so it was pretty intense. Oh, look at the damage we're doing. We already have them below half health. I'm doing pretty good on health too. But again, I can't dodge his attacks. You're so close. Okay, he's speeding up. I'm really low. Look at his health! Uh, I could have literally sneezed and I would have done enough damage. I think I think I was actually upset in the moment. I, I logged off for the day after that. But the next day, I was back at it again. And I decided I wanted the golf cart for the fight. I think I want to try out the golf cart. And I didn't really know how golfing worked in this game since I'd literally never done it before. But you literally have to golf so much for this damn golf cart. Eventually, I learned the farther from the hole you are, the more points you get. So I built this little structure and it took some finicking but after a while I finally got it to work and I golfed there for a little while until I realized that this was just not doing anything. How much do I need to golf for? So I went onto my arena at home and golfed there instead. I found out exactly how far I had to be away to get a hole in one so I was the farthest away as possible and I just started golfing away. So I golfed and golfed and golfed some more and some more. How much do I need to golf? God damn. Golfing. I am just golfing, I've been golfing for like forever. Can I get a thing yet? I kid you not, I golfed for like two and a half hours straight before finally getting enough points. It was just terrible. But after a while, I finally did get it, and I don't think I even really used it, so that was a gigantic waste of time. But I went back to hell, where I probably belong, and I tried out the wall of flesh again. Well, that's not exactly a good start. Just took a ton of damage in the lava. Oh, the fight just started. I'm already taking so much damage. Alright, just about half health. Let's try out the golf cart a little bit. Oh, I'm gonna die. I'm so low. Just run, just, just run, just run. Run and hide. Ow. Okay, let's go back in. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. There's literally nothing else I can do. What am I supposed to do? So I just went straight back to trying again. Okay, this is seriously, I think this is the last time I can do this. I'm so done with this. <gasps> Oh, oh, no, 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 that's not good. Oh, my health. I'm getting too low. I need to play this safe. All right, I'm going back in. Oh my 
my god. <laughs> yes. Finally. Look at how close that fight got. That is just insane. I was literally at like one HP or something. I still can't believe that. Let's open up my bag here. But I had no time to waste, so I went back up and teleported to the Shimmer, throwing in my emblem until it became a melee one. Now, I had to go right back to the drawing board and decide what my next weapon would be. At this point, there's really only a few good options. I could mine up some ores for the adamantite sword or the spear, or upgrade my phase blade to the phase saber. I decided to go with the third option, at least for now, until I could get my hands on those hard mode ores, because in master mode, pretty much everything one-shots you at the beginning of hard mode, and I would need a better weapon to help me keep just a few more hairs in my head than I would otherwise. So I went to the hollow to collect some crystals, because all you need is the crystals and the phase blade, and I went to craft it. Wait, why can't I craft it? I have everything I need. It turns out you need an ore calcum or mithril anvil. So I went to the corruption and smashed some altars, filling the world with cobalt, ore calcum, and adamantite. Then I jumped down my elevator and started progressing through the ores. Once I had enough mithril, I crafted up the anvil and made my phase saber. It had a pretty lame refix, so I reforged it to superior. Let's test this thing out. Ooh, ooh, take that. Yeah, take that. Take it. Mm, yeah. And then continued getting getting my hard mode ores, and once I had enough adamantite, I forged a full set of armor and both the adamantite glaive and sword. I went to the ocean and found this little freak little ass bitch. Die, dumbass. Eat my tip. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 And I just got completely distracted by this guy. I dug him a little grave and buried him alive. Yeah, eat the sand, dumbass. How's it taste? Then I went all the way to the other ocean. I don't even really know why. I guess because I just didn't want to have to look at the angler anymore. Wait, what? What? What kind of hootie shit is this? So I went all the way back to the other ocean once again. Let me just check he's not over here. Okay, I think we're good. Oh my god! What are you? What are you? Get away from me! At this point, I couldn't even remember why I was at the ocean in the first place, but I'm definitely scared of the angler now. There's for sure some demonic crap happening with him. <laughs> Anyway, I thought that there wasn't really much more I could do, so I crafted up a summon for Skeletron Prime, and once it became nighttime, I summoned him up. And I was pretty confident that this fight would be pretty easy. This shouldn't be too hard. I'm gonna go for his laser hand first. Oh no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no! No! Huh, that was the entire fight, by the way. So these mechs might be a little harder than I first thought. I know I've already said this a few times, but it's basically impossible not to get hit when you're forced to be this close up. The adamantite glaive gives us a tiny bit of extra range, but it's not much in the grand scheme of things. Anyway, I get my potions back, craft up a destroyer summon, and try him instead. All things considered, I guess it starts off pretty well, but it becomes very clear very soon that this boss was gonna be a real challenge. The destroyer is honestly just a bullet at hell boss in master mode and I literally cannot dodge the lasers while I'm dealing damage and the proceeds bonds aren't any help because they have so much health in master mode it takes several hits to take them out and they of course just add to the amount of lasers I have to worry about and so eventually the destroyer ended up destroying me and honestly the sheer difficulty of this challenge was starting to become very apparent but then I remembered what the wise Rick Astley taught me recalling his inspirational words never gonna give you up never gonna let you down and so I I didn't give up, nor will I let you down. So I marched back down to hell right where I belong and farmed up enough souls for all the mech summons. And I also wanted the obsidian rose because then I'd have everything I need for the Terra Spark boots. Oh, look at that. A corruption key. I can't use it, but it's pretty cool, I guess. It took a while, but after I got it, I went to the surface and crafted the lava waders. Then the sweet, succulent, straight up pimpin' Terra Spark boots. Terra Spark? More like tear apart these enemies because I'm coming through. Woo! <laughs> Everybody get out the way! <laughs> we haven't gotten a pair of Hermes boots in a little while, so quick collection check. And just for the record, this is after selling several pairs of boots, by the way. Before taking on Skeletron Prime again, I also thought it beneficial to make some wings, so I went up to the Sky Islands. After a while of farming harpies for the giant harpy feather, I go back to my base, and while I'm trying to take a nap, I feel deep vibrations from below, which is usually a common occurrence for me, but this time it wasn't my bedside pickle, but instead a long, hard, throbbing worm of a mech boss. And soon Soon enough, the destroyer spawned in. It was going a little better than last time, but I was having the same problems. I was just constantly getting hit, and there wasn't really anything I could do about that, so I died. So I went to sleep to wait for a snowstorm. What are you doing up there? Bro, 
Get off the roof. What was wrong with you? You look dumb as hell right now. You don't even realize how dumb you look right now. Get off the roof. And after a while, one came. Ooh, here we are. Just hide out in my little man box here. Oh, here it comes. I can't hit him. I can't hit him. Bro. Okay, it seems I've run into a problem. I literally can't even hit him from inside my box, and there's no way in hell I'm fighting that thing normally. Because even though I am very manly and tough and totally capable of taking him down, as the name of my man box suggests, I just didn't want to embarrass him like that. But after respawning, I find a pretty good method. The golem somehow gets trapped and I'm able to just attack it from there. Yeah, how do you like that, buddy? Huh, how's it feel? How's it feel? Okay, no wings it is. Bro, what am I supposed to even do? And it's not like the wings are gonna do much because mobility means nothing to me when I have to be inside the boss's anal cavity to get any damage in. So I go back to the snow biome and make the hole a little bit wider so I can actually hit things from inside it. So then I went back to farming for ice golem. Bro, what are you doing? Get the frick out of here, man. And after a while, I still don't get the ice feather, so I decide I might be able to get the giant harpy feather. But after forever of trying to farm for that, I give up on that too and decide to fight Skeletron Prime again. Come on, man. And then I tried again. You know, let's try reforging some of my stuff. Maybe that'll help. And I sleep until the next night to try once again. Anal, 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 anal. I go back to farming for the giant harpy feather, and this part of the game just becomes really repetitive, so after farming harpies for forever, I finally get the feather. Yes, finally. That took forever. Give me that. Thank you. So I craft another mechanical skull and sleep till nighttime to try Skeletron Prime again. Deep vibrations? Oh, not again. Whoa, here come the lasers. Oh, I'm already at like half health. Oh, I'm so low. Sword does better damage. I need another heal. Nope. Oh no, I'm so low, I'm so low. No, dude, I was so close. To clear my head, I go to the jungle to get collecting turtle shells out the way. But the jungle evidently is not a great place to calm down. But eventually, I do collect all three shells. And now it was time for another mech boss attempt. And this time, I decided to switch it up and go for the twins. Come at me. You've got nothing on me. Well... I spent literally all of my money at the Goblin Tinker trying to get better reforges, so I am unfortunately forced to sell my boots collection. This is a sad day for mankind, but it must be done for the greater good. All right, let's kill Skeletron Prime. Fuck. Okay, this it's gonna happen this time. It's gonna happen. I can feel it. I can't hit him. <laughs> I hate true melee. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna try going for his laser hand first, because that's what does the most damage. Okay, there we go. Get some damage in on his head. There we go. Get it. Get the laser hand out. Oh, I'm already at half health. I'm taking so much damage. There we go. Laser hand's almost down. Laser hand's almost down. I gotta heal. There goes the laser hand. Okay, now I just gotta focus on dodging and doing damage to the head. Oh no, 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 that's a lot of damage. There we go. Oh, I'm so low. Thank you. There we go, get some damage, get some damage. Some more damage with the sword. Nice. That is big damage. Why did I do this during a slime rain? Oh! Okay, gotta heal off. We're good, we're good. Oh my god. Let me just get a kill from the nurse. I have to be safe. I have to play this safe. You're so low. Come on, come on. Oh my god, come on. I'm so close. Yes!
Hell yeah! With Prime finally defeated, I used the hollow bars to upgrade my weapons to the Gungnir and Excalibur, then went straight into the twins fight. But it became daytime and they flew away. Oh, come back, please. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It was an accident. Damn. But I did notice that the Gungnir and Excalibur are an incredible improvement over the adamantite weapons I had before. I just, sitting here recording this voiceover, I just love these weapons now. They were pretty lackluster before I had to do this challenge, but now I'm really starting to appreciate them. But anyway, after finally Farming up enough chunks, I craft another destroyer and twin summon, and with these new weapons, I was feeling more confident than ever. So I reforged both of them to godly and went to the jungle to farm some life roots while I wait for nighttime. I didn't get any though, so I just went home, buffed up, and summoned in the destroyer. The extra range of the Gungnir made attacking the boss far easier, and the Excalibur made dealing with the pros a piece of cake. With the Gungnir, I was able to pierce multiple segments of the boss. The insane amount of lasers was still ass to deal with, and I did get hit with the destroyer head once or twice, so there were some parts where I got really low on health and really close to dying, but with my intense epic gamer skills and insane clutches, the fight wasn't too bad and I was able to take the destroyer out without much trouble. And feeling the bloodlust simmer beneath my skin, I slept until the next night, rebuffed and went straight on to the twins. This fight was a lot more difficult. Spasmatism was a bitch. You couldn't hit him unless he was dashing at you. I can't hit him! And being so close up, dodging his cursed flames that do an unfair amount of damage is extra difficult. But I think it was even worse once he transformed, because I had to switch in between invading his personal space and running away so super quickly. Let's just say I was on super low health the entire time. Basically, every time he switched in between dashing and spitting his green diarrhea at me, I lost all of my health. But with some strategic nurse heals and use of the slime mount, I was able to get really close to taking him down before he finally took me out. And this time, despite the amount of attempts I've put into these freaks, I wasn't crying and screaming and shitting, but instead, I was hopeful. So I went back to the jungle to search for the Titan Glove for Mimix in order to improve my loadout. I only died like one or two or 48 times before I got it, so it wasn't too bad. I combined it with a Feral Claws at home and obtained the Power Glove. And after that, I gathered up some potions and summoned the twins. In again. I was having the same problems as before, and was relentlessly screaming because of my low health, but after a while of attacking Spaz, I started to get the pattern down and had a pretty nice time. So much so that I was practically on full health when I took him down. Now it was on to Retinazer, and... Oh, he's turning. There he goes. Come here, buddy. Yo, I can't hit him. Surprisingly, he was actually much harder than Spaz, even requiring me to use the nurse after almost dying. Ow. I need to heal. Thank you, ma'am. Retinazer doesn't dash at you, so getting any hits in at all without relentlessly shoving my balls in his mouth was pretty much impossible, which in turn made dodging his lasers impossible. Where buddy, you're low. You're low, freak. But after a while, because of my god gamer skills and nothing else, I took him down. There it is. The jungle was growing restless and I could feel the accumulating power starting to course through my veins. I used some hollowed bars in the souls of the mechs to craft the pickaxe axe, turn my melee emblem into an Avengers emblem with those same souls, combine the emblem and my power glove for the mechanical glove, and finally wield together the mechanical glove and magma stone to get the mighty fire gauntlet. Then I lugged myself right back to the jungle biome with a spelunker potion in hand, going ham mining chlorophyte and collecting any life roots I see. Once my Spelunka ran out, with an abundance of chlorophyte, I teleported home, turning the ore into bars and forging the true Excalibur and making the first two pieces of hollowed armor. I knew, unlike the entire rest of this playthrough, the next stage of the game would be a tiny bit less stress-inducing. Because with a powerful weapon at my fingertips, I knew Plantera would only be a little difficult, instead of... Ah! Uh, help! Help me! kind of difficult. But I quickly railed the destroyer, only almost dying like 12 times to get the rest of the hollowed bars I needed to craft the pants of the armor set. Normally, I think wearing pants is optional, but in a playthrough like this, having my special bits exposed is a little nerve-wracking. But now that I had the true Excalibur, a full set of hollowed armor, and a full-on erection, the last thing I would need is full health. So I go back to the jungle with some spelunkers and start collecting. At some point during farming, I guess something must have come over me because knowing that I knew the location of a second bulb, I just destroyed one without any preparation, no arena, no potions, and already on low health. So that went about as expected. After like an hour of searching and not having much more luck, I go home and sleep for a little while to allow the grass to spread and more fruits to spawn. Alright, it's time to go back to work, fellas. Oh, that's just great that's gonna be fun to deal with and that ended up working quite well because it only took a few more minutes before i was full on health Ah oh, crap i forgot about this oh crap oh 
I don't- I While I'm remember. having oh so much fun with this event, I'd like to ask Get if you're here. enjoying this video and want to see more from me, consider subscribing. You can always take it back if you find you don't like the videos I'm posting, and it would help me out more than you know. And after a little bit, I was finally able to defeat the pirates, but not before they got the last laugh. I hate you. With that disturbance out of the way, I made my way to the shimmer, throwing in a life fruit and getting the Aegis fruit in return. Now fully geared up, I made my way back to the jungle and cleared out a large area for the Plantera Arena, then filled it with torches and platforms. But of course not without getting relentlessly attacked by jungle enemies can you leave me alone bro i'm actually gonna die go away let me just finish i mean it was so bad that it felt like i was doing more fighting than i was actually building just let me finish oh my god oh my this bat I'm actually so done with this. But once I felt it was good enough, I haphazardly threw down a few campfires, buffed up, and broke Plantera's bulb. It is currently 5 in the morning and I haven't slept. Let's do this. Okay. Okay, I'm already low. Just circle, just circle. We're doing really good damage, actually. Okay, okay. I'm, that, I'm taking too much damage. I'm half health. Ow, bro. Ow, ow, ow. First phase is not supposed to be hard. Just get some honey. I'm actually so low. I'm so low. Get some damage with the gun there, maybe. Just circle, just circle. I'm gonna try to be greedy, just circle. Just circle and you'll, you'll dodge all the attacks. Get some more honey. Okay, here we are, second phase. Back to the Excalibur. It's good at taking out these limbs. Yeah. All right, good damage. We're also taking a lot of damage, but should be fine. Okay, that actually hurts quite a bit. I can heal here in a sec. There we go. That hurts pretty good. More honey, more honey. I'm actually so low, <laughs> I'm gonna die. Just run, I'm just running now. I don't even care, just run. Run and heal. About to get another heal here as well. Doing good damage. Go use our heal back at full health. All right, we can get some damage in now. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, oh, that's good damage. Come on, just die. Just die, buddy. You're low. Get in for some nice damage. There we go. You're low. You're so close. Come on. Yeah, give me a challenge. This is too easy. I would later regret these words. While I did admittedly get pretty low at a few points, the Plantera fight was really standard, and I'm not complaining about the weapons I had to use at all. Feeling cocky due to my recent victory, I made my way to the Golem's Chamber, placed down some platforms, and immediately summoned him up. Without any buffs, or regen stations, or extra preparations, like, I don't know, better armor, or maybe a different weapon. You literally wish you could defeat me, Golem. I got down incredibly low during this fight, but eventually I got his patterns down and found an incredible strategy. My platform was at the perfect height to just barely be able to hit the golem with my gun and so standing there and running back and forth gave me ample time to react to his attacks, and with me starting to memorize his attack patterns, I felt more confident than ever. In retrospect, going in to get some greedy extra damage might not have been the best decision, and when I got home, I had a blood moon to greet me. Oh great, why does this game hate me so much? But needing some ectoplasm for later, I made my way to the dungeon and end up accidentally getting a new weapon with one of the first enemies I killed. The key brand. Hell yeah, let's go. This thing does so so much damage. Whoa, Lee, buddy, do you really have to do me like that? Now, the Kirand is a really good weapon with a base damage of 105, a lot higher than the true Excalibur 72, and the ability to deal more damage to her enemies up to a max of 250% damage. But the range is abysmal. So much so that it's actually even worse than our very first weapon, the Cactus Sword. And I'm not kidding, look. So while this weapon has the potential to deal incredible damage, I can't use it without getting hit. It's a high risk, high reward scenario. Anyway, back in the dungeon, I dug through a wall and built a platform in order to manufacture a makeshift dungeon farm. Look at that, can ectoplasm already? What? What the hell, man? That's not, that's not fair. What the hell? This, these freaks are the bane of my existence. I hate these guys. Oh, no, 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 please, please stop, please, no. I'm actually gonna die. I can't even teleport home. Please, please, go away. Leave me alone! Get away from me! <laughs> Then I decided to summon a solar eclipse in hopes of getting the Neptune shell and moonstone for the celestial stone. Oh, here comes Mothron. I've literally been fighting her forever! Just die already! Oh my 
god, bro. Oh, the moonstone. Hmm, maybe it wasn't all bad. It's actually becoming a graveyard. I've died so many times. Oh, and there's a Neptune shell. And I actually ended up getting both relatively quickly. I also happened to get the Butcher's Chainsaw, another very good true melee weapon. It has a base damage of 120, and while it does emit projectiles, it only does so after making contact with damage, making it still within the bounds of true melee. The sparks that it emits are pretty good too, able to deal 50% of the chainsaw itself, and the weapon has a 30% crit strike chance. It was pretty nice, and an unexpected additional to my arsenal. But with so many good weapons already, I wouldn't be using it all that much. Bro, actually look at my base. This is actually a graveyard. I have died so many times. After completing the solar eclipse, I went back to the dungeon. Dude, I went back to the dungeon and got to farm. And I got back to farming ectoplasm after building a room with a bed this time, so I didn't have to travel all the way back to the dungeon if I die. So with the amount of enemies in the dungeon that can either go through blocks or have projectiles, this isn't exactly a safe farm, and I still have to be very cautious, but it works. Well, there you can see what I mean. And after a long time of farming, I had just about every dungeon drop and over 40 ectoplasm. That should be enough ectoplasm. Spoiler alert, it was not enough ectoplasm. But I put it away for later, stocked up on buffs, and headed back to Golem's chamber. Here we go again. Oh my god, I'm already so low. It's surprisingly hard to get hits on Golem. Starting to do a little better here. Maybe some chainsaw action. Okay, no, that, <laughs> that does not work. I can use the Excalibur here to get rid of the hands. That seems to work pretty well. The hands are pretty low, but I am not doing that great on health. Okay, I can kind of just stay up here and focus on getting the hands out while dodging. Try and regen some health here. Oh, there goes one hand. And there's the other. Alright, perfect. Now we can just focus on the head, get some damage in with the Excalibur here, and it shouldn't be too bad until his head pops off, really. Despite being on very low health the entire fight, I was somehow hanging in there. Um, it's just- it's just so hard to get hits in on this boss. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I am uncomfortably low right here. I was just able to drink a healing potion, but his lasers are starting to go kind of crazy, and I can't get any hits on him. This is- this is actually pretty difficult. I am actually like one shot right now. I am less than a heart. Please, what am I supposed to do? Help me, help- Oh, no. Damn. So, yeah, it maybe didn't go exactly as I had planned, but I still had willpower, I still had strength, I still had confidence, I still had my mommy of light body pillow by my side. Wait, what? Who put that in the script? Anyway, I summoned Golem up once again. Oh... Why didn't I win? I don't know, but I think the government has something to do with it. I realized I didn't buff last time, so I went straight back to the dungeon for round two. Okay, I got this this time. I started off close to the boss with my true Excalibur trying to take out the hands, but it didn't take long for me to get low on health, so I just started switching between being on the ground near Golem to get damage in and being on the platform to focus on dodging and healing, and I just kept cycling between those strategies until his head popped off. Oh my god, I'm so low. I'm so low. I'm gonna die. I was only at one and a half hearts, but did I scream? Did I cry? cry? Did I piss my pants? No, well, yeah, but that's besides the point. So to ensure my victory, I reforged all of my accessories to either menacing, warding, or lucky, and took on Queen Slime for fun, which at this point in the game obviously wasn't that difficult. Oh, look how much damage she's doing. What am I supposed to do? No. Jesus. Run, just run, just run. Okay, I gotta heal off and I'm back at the arena at home. This shouldn't be too bad. Ow, ow, that hurts. I wasn't even scared. After that, I went straight back to the temple and summoned in the golem again. Once again, I started off the fight by staying up close to the golem and swinging with my true Excalibur trying to take out his hands. Now, more used to the fight, I was able to take out both his hands with relative ease. Once I had taken both of his hands down, he started spamming his lasers, which were very difficult to dodge from this distance. So I went back up to the top platform to focus on dodging and trying not to do anything dumb. Is this a bad idea? I'm so low! I'm gonna die! I wasn't even scared. Yeah, that was dumb. So I think my thought was, if I spawn in the eye of the Thulu and killed it, he would drop me some hearts and I'd get some extra health. But he ended up just almost killing me and now I was right back to where I started. The more his head gets close to popping off, he starts shooting lasers like crazy and they're extremely difficult to dodge. But in my infinite wisdom, I stay on the floor of the temple to get some greedy damage. And when I got a little too close to death, I went back to the platform and rinsed and repeated. All right, this is a pretty good strategy. I am so low though. 
I'm being way too greedy. Oh, his head popped off. Nice. I'm so low. Please don't kill me, Mr. Golem. At first, when his head popped, I stayed on the top platform and dealt damage with my gun mirror. And after healing enough, I periodically go back in for a tiny bit of damage with the key brand. It does a lot of damage, but I also can't deal damage without getting hit, so it's a trade-off. And after a while, I get down memorizing the laser's pattern, and from then on, it was actually not bad at all. Um, I'm actually doing pretty okay right now i mean i'm not great on health but he's also not really able to hit me that much anymore now that i've got the pattern down i'm feeling pretty good actually i'm getting like <laughs> no hits on him at all though staying alive right now is the most important part oh my god there it is that was surprisingly easy the key brand is so good too oh look at that I got the pixel. I beat a few more golems and died to a few more golems to get enough beetle shells as well as farming for the sunstone because then I would have everything I needed for the sweet succulent celestial shell. I fought up against several golems, including the ones I didn't record. It was probably around 10 or so, but after a while, I did finally get the sunstone. So I went home and crafted up the celestial shell. Yes, sir. Oh, and it's warding. That's icing on the cake right now. And the beetle armor. Nice. Now there's actually two options for a final true melee weapon one of them being Mommy of Light Starlight. So I built a platform in the hollow biome and tried to sleep till the next night to get prismatic lace wings in order to spawn the boss, but no, nothing is ever allowed to be that easy for me, is it? Is it, Red? Yeah, I see you with your smug little smile. You know what you're doing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I died a few times during the solar eclipse, then tried to go down to the dungeon to farm some more ectoplasm and died there. Oh no, not this time. We're not doing this again, sir. That's it. I'm killing someone. There's no one here to kill. All my NPCs were murdered in the solar eclipse. I... I just... I don't... Ah! After a while in the dungeon, I had gotten the paladin shield, so I went to the snow biome and farmed up the frozen turtle shell before going home and combining them into the mighty frozen shield. Grants immunity to knockback, puts a shell around the owner when below 50% life that reduces damage by 25%, absorbs 25% of damage done to players on your team when above 25% life. That's a lot of words, but it's really good, trust me. Anyway, now it was time to fight Empress. I killed the first prismatic lacewing I saw and summoned her in. And let's just say that this fight is very difficult with true melee because her attacks are literally built to have you moving around a lot not this close up to the boss and so i had to use the nurse to heal every couple of seconds but even with that i lost the fight before even getting to her second stage and i just decided that i would not even try this fight again because like me while fighting mommy of light it's way too hard instead i picked up some ectoplasm from home and picked up the necessary materials for the pumpkin moon medallion so after planting the pumpkin seeds and waiting for them to grow i crafted one up when night fell once again i summoned up the pumpkin moon as usual the first few phases weren't too bad, but when the morning wood started spawning, things got a lot worse. True melee is not a good match for this boss. These guys are- oh my god, these guys are so annoying. I literally- I, lit I literally can't do anything! They kill you so fast! This isn't fair! It is so difficult to dodge these guys, and they do so much damage. It is ridiculous. They're insufferable, and they're freaking attacks! Look at them! They're, they stay on the ground! What am I even supposed to do? How do I fight these guys with true melee? There we go, I finally managed to kill one of them. Okay, there we go. I got the second guy, and immediately another one spawns. I literally don't even know what I'm supposed to do. These guys, they, they're so annoying. Okay, we finally got pumpkin spawning now. Once the pumpkin spawned, I used the true Excalibur for damage and used the key brand up close for some extra sauce. Pumpkin's attacks are actually surprisingly easy to dodge from this close up when compared to the morning woods. Obviously, it still wasn't easy. Damn it. So after I respawned from dying to that pumpkin, the night was already over. So I crafted another medallion and slept till the next night to start up the pumpkin moon, and it went about the same as the first one. First few waves are easy, morning woods are surprisingly hard, repeatedly die, then when wave 10 came, the first pumpkin spawned in. He's harder than I initially thought he would be, and I even had to heal at the nurse, but I was able to defeat him and he dropped nothing. Woo! Just what I wanted. And then it was morning and the pumpkin moon passed. Now I really did have to go through a lot of pumpkin moons. So to save you some time and me some sanity, I'm gonna give you a quick montage of all the highlights. And the third pumpkin drops nothing. The pumpkins were pretty difficult to defeat, but after a few pumpkins, his patterns got somewhat easy to recognize and I was able to get more confident with dealing damage. I didn't record the fourth pumpkin moon, but it's fine because I didn't get anything anyway. I did craft the spooky wings though. By the fifth pumpkin moon, I started getting things down. So I died to the more 
morning woods less and less. I still died a lot due to the nature of this challenge, but less. I died to the fifth pumpkin, but I got another one that night, so things were looking hopeful. I died to that one too. But then I got another one, and it dropped me the bat scepter. A fourth pumpkin did spawn that night, but even if I didn't die trying to get in as much damage as possible, I wouldn't have had enough time to kill it. Now on to the sixth pumpkin moon. The first pumpkin granted me a second bat scepter. Oh yeah, just what I wanted, another bat scepter. That's great. And the second gave me a candy corn rifle. Now on lucky number seven, the first pumpkin killed me due to already being low on health, and the next one gave me nothing but a few pets. The third gave me the jack-o'-lantern launcher, and then it was the end of the night. I'm really getting tired of this. Well, you know what they say, eighth time's the charm. So the next pumpkin on the chopping block gave me another candy corn rifle. I'm going to hit something and or someone and with four seconds before it became daytime and he flew away i was finally gifted the horseman's blade yes finally a true melee weapon that spawns pumpkins on contact for extra damage so to celebrate here's a montage of all of my deaths during the pumpkin moons I ran straight to the Moist Goblin Tinker and reforged it to Legendary and immediately went directly into the cultist fight with no thought at all. This should be pretty easy. Come on, buddy, you got nothing on me. No, I was so close. Go back, go back. Look at how close I was. Well, maybe I was a little bit too cocky, but with some more thought and some potions, I went back to try again. I managed to take out the cultists without much trouble, and now the celestials were upon us. I immediately ran to my left, where I ran into the stardust pillar. I started trying to take out the enemy slowly, but eventually they got the best of me. So when I returned home, first on the chopping block was the nebula pillar. Of course it was hard, but I don't really need to tell you that because this entire challenge has been incredibly difficult. For most of the fight, I just dipped in a little to get a few mobs to spawn, then left, rinse and repeat, die a few dozen times, and after a half hour and once the shield was down, I hopped up on my broomstick and went in to take down the pillar. Next up was the Stardust Pillar, and it was surprisingly hard, but after a while, it fell too. Then I moved on to Vortex, also very difficult, but I was able to take it down. And finally, I was on to the Solar Pillar, and that wasn't too bad because the Solar Pillar isn't that hard, but now you know what it it was time for. Alright, well, of course this wasn't going to be easy, but there was really nothing left I could do to improve. So I just kept trying, and after a few more attempts, I kept getting better and better. But after a while, I was starting to wonder if I even had the skills to do this. But we've been on a very long journey together, and I knew that I couldn't leave this world without freeing it of evil. So I rushed down to the mushroom biome, where I caught a truffle and quickly took out Duke Fishon, obtaining the shrimpy truffle. Then I took out all three mech boxes once again, as well as the wall of flesh, using the souls and emblem to make a mechanical glove to stack with my fire gauntlet to increase my damage output. Then I took on the Moon Lord once again. Okay, well, I still couldn't give up, so I reforged every single one of my accessories to menacing, then went to hell again to take out the wall of flesh one more time, shimmering that emblem into a melee one, and of course reforging it to menacing. Then I used my final celestial sigil to take out the Moon Lord. I set my spawn inside the nurse's house so I could easily teleport back, and after once again taking hours of my life and smelling the familiar scent of death a hundred times in order to defeat the cultists and the pillars, I was ready to try again. The right eye was down. The left eye was down. The top eye was defeated and the heart was finally exposed. I tried to slowly chip away at his health, but I had accidentally removed my spawn point without realizing it. And when I used my magic mirror to get yet another heal, I was at home, and the Moon Lord bested me. Low on money from my obscene amount of nurse heals, I decided to take on Golem to get some funds, but watching as I almost died to Golem, I was starting to become unsure that I was even capable of doing this. So running low on hope, I restocked my buff potions, crafted some super Super heals with the fragments and was willing to try one last time. Alright, here we are. Moon Lord again. Let's do this. Alright, just I'm already taking a good amount of damage because it's really hard to dodge from this distance, obviously, but the pumpkins make it a little easier. I already had to take a heal, and I'm taking a lot of damage, but I'm doing 
pretty decent damage as well. I am doing pretty good damage with, especially with these pumpkins dealing extra damage. And I'm at like half health. I'm gonna teleport home, get a heal. Comes the laser. Gotta make sure to dodge that. I'm doing pretty good good but i know i'm gonna have to heal about a million times because that's what happens every time basically it's just one small slip up that messes me up oh my god i'm so low just took another heal i'm just gonna be teleporting home as much as possible because one tiny slip up and it's over for me i need to make 100 percent certain that i don't die because I'm going to constantly be on low health. I'm going to constantly be having to teleport home to heal from the nurse. I just can't make a mistake. Two hands are down though. It's just the top eye left. And that's always the hardest one to get. And teleport home again. Get another heal. And look at that. We're already, oh my god, already back at three hearts. I did not have enough time to touch that laser. Get a couple hits in on that top eye. And I'm just focusing on dodging right now. The eyes open again. Trying to get some hits in, I have to teleport home because of the laser. That was close for comfort. The top eye is getting very close to being dead. Let's focus on dodging till it opens again, there we go. And now, all right, dodge that. And now I can do a little more damage. Every time I go up to like hit the eye, he keeps moving up and then I end up hitting the top of the world. The top eye is very, very close to being down. There it is. All right, the core is open. We've been here a few times before. I just gotta make sure not to make a mistake, and now it's just all about doing as much damage to the core as humanly possible. It's really hard to get hits in on that core, because if I move down, then he keeps moving down, and, and as you can see, I keep just running into the floor. So it's hard to get hits in. All right, half health, gonna get a heal. I can't make a mistake. We are so close. I've been this close before. And I've made a mistake, and I know how it feels, and I don't want to do that again. Alright, we're at half health here. We're doing some good damage. We're very, very close. I just want to get this done, and I am so incredibly close. Oh my god, I am so close. I'm so close. Just a few more hits. I can't get greedy. I can't get greedy. And there it is. Oh my god. We did it. We actually did it. I can't believe it. We actually did it. And just like that, the challenge had been defeated. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and think more people should see it, the best thing you can do for me is just take a quick second to drop a like. Join my Discord using the link in the description and consider becoming a channel member because I have a lot of cool members-only content on the way. Thank you, and I'll see you later.